Christ died for all of us. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I'm seeing. Thank you, Lord, for restoration. Into your hands now we present ourselves, those who are watching in their homes, be it in their car or on the road, wherever they are. Pray, God, that as they open their hearts to receive a word from above, that healing will take place. Thank you for blessing your word as, as it shall impart now to those who are watching on YouTube, Facebook, or be it on other channels. I pray, God, for your blessing. Amen. All right. Journey with me as we look at St. Luke chapter 17. St. Luke chapter 17. So turn your Bibles with me or maybe your iPod or your tablet, whatever it may be, or your phone to Luke chapter 17. And we're going to look at from verse 11 onward. The Bible says, and journey with me. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered, as he entered Sister Caroline into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said unto them, Go, shew yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. They were cleansed. Verse 15 says, And one of them, with, when he saw, when he saw, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice, glorified God and I say praise the Lord he saw when he saw that he was healed he turned back you turn and glorified God fell down on his face at his feet giving him thanks praise God and he was a Samaritan note he was a Samaritan Jesus answering said my pastor, Pastor Nevins. Were there not ten cleansed, my pastor? But where are the nine? Ten were cleansed. Where are the nine? Verse 18 says, There are not found that return to, to give glory to God, save this stranger, a Samaritan. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee Whole. New hope. For the year 2021, people are looking for new hope. Many persons place their hope in a vaccine that should be here in February, thereabout. And they're looking for hope. They're looking for security. Some persons put their hope, Elder Duncan, in the leadership of our country, in the leadership of the United States of America or in the leadership of various countries and even in terms of things and they have hope they are trusting in objects and idols you name it and in their mind they will be rescued they will be saved they will be protected not recognizing the Bible says in Jeremiah 17 they are about cursed is the man that put his trust in man but in verse 10, there about it says, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. Now, as we journey into this uh, leprosy story in Luke chapter 17, I present to you a scenario where a new hope came to these persons who were filled with leprosy. Journey with me as we continue. By the way, new means having recently come into existence. Like Elder Duncan, you receive a brand new suit or a brand new shoes or what else? A brand new house, a brand new car, or, or, or what? A brand new laptop, a brand new baby. Come on now, uh, Elder Duncan, a brand new baby. Can you imagine those who are looking for birth? New, having recently come into existence. New baby, that's right, Elder. Hope means 
a feeling of expectation and desire for a particular thing to happen. So people are placing their hope in the vaccine, hoping that it will protect them from COVID, hoping that they will be delivered. Various persons place their hope in various things. For example, hope in food, hope in job, hope in marriage, hope in children, hope in house, hope in car. Some persons are even hoping, Mr. President, for divorce. <laughs> Can you imagine? Hope in terms of migration, job loss, uh, hope in terms of change of job. People hope in, in various things, brothers and sisters. But notice verse 11. It says, he passed through Samaria. He passed through Samaria because he was going to Galilee. Follow me. And there met him in verse 12, 10 lepers that stood afar off. Now, based on history, these persons with leprosy, they should not come near you. They should be a certain distance away. According to research, Ellicott's commentary says that it was about 100 paces, Mr. President, which means that it was over 200 feet, which means it was quite a distance. Quite a distance. These persons were far out away they stood afar off and in terms of an agenda it was not communicated to others that Jesus was heading to those persons that were afar off but he made himself accessible he made himself accessible and as we read through the historical context in terms of leprosy turn with me to Leviticus chapter 13 because pastor is getting somewhere Leviticus chapter 13 and verse 38. Leviticus chapter 13 and verse 38. It says, If a man, Elder Duncan, also or a woman, have in the skin of their flesh bright spots, even white bright spots, verse 39, then the priest shall look and behold, the Bible says, if the bright spots in the skin of their flesh be darkish white, it is freckled spot that growth in the skin. He is, the Bible says, he is clean. But verse 40 says, and the man whose hair is falling off. No, not like pastor whose hair is falling off. Not in that pastor Nevins <laughs> in terms of hair falling off. <laughs> but it says, and he that hath his hair falling off from the part of his head toward his face. Have mercy. He is, forehead, his, he is forehead bald, yet he is clean. And if there be in the bald head or bald forehead a white reddish sore, it is a leprosy. So it tells in terms of the nature sprung up in his bald head or in his bald forehead. And it tells in terms of the ritual that should take place. So it tells in terms of the diagnosis for this particular sickness or disease, leprosy. But it also speaks of a treatment or the cleansing process in Leviticus chapter 14, verses 1 through. Now, look at, we address the cleansing process. Verse 14, chapter 14 and verse 1 of Leviticus. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest. He shall be brought unto the priest, the Bible says, and the priest shall go forth out of the go forth out of the camp, and the priest shall look and behold if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper. Then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed two birds alive and clean and cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. So there was a ritual that the priest or those persons should go through for cleansing, which means that there was the possibility that persons could be cleansed. And brothers and sisters, as we journey, as we continue now, verse 13 now mentioned that they lifted up their voices and they cried, Jesus, Master. They cried, Master. They cried, Jesus, brothers and sisters. They cried. Now, the cry for 
for, for leper or unclean before was a cry for alienation, was a cry, Pastor Nevins, for separation. In other words, don't come near us because we are unclean. We can contaminate you because right now we are not in a good shape. We are not clean. Please do not come near us. Unclean we are. Unclean we are. Sick, disease. And right now, we don't want you to come close to us. But this time they heard that someone was passing by Elder Duncan. They heard that someone who is able to bring healing and restoration. They heard of the name Jesus. They heard what he did to others. And in their mind, if Jesus had done something for others, he can do it for me. And I said, praise the Lord. If God has done it for someone, Sister Carolyn, God can do it for me. If he has healed someone with cancer, God can do it for me. If he has healed someone with diabetes, God can do it for me. If he has healed someone with high blood pressure, God can do it for me. If he has healed someone with sickle cell, God can do it for me. If he has healed someone with depression or anxiety, God can do it for me. What he has done for others, he can do it. For me, and I say, praise the Lord. You see, they gathered all their energy, Pastor Nevins. They gathered their energy right now because they heard of Jesus and they cried out. They cried out. Let me tell you something. The Bible said they lifted up their voices. The Bible did not say that they shouted. But they lifted up their voice because with this deadly disease, it would have affected their throat. It would have affected their voice box. It would have affected their, their limbs as well. So they didn't have much energy to shout. They didn't have much energy, but what they had, they cried. They cried unto God. They lifted up their voice in, in, in their own strength, with the strength that they had. And I can only imagine, they didn't have much strength. So maybe they shout, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, they echoed it. They echoed the voice because they want healing. When persons want healing, they will seek for healing. They will reach out for healing. I'm sure other sick people were around when Jesus was passing through. But these persons not only heard of Jesus, but they reached out to Jesus. I say to someone, reach out and touch Jesus because he's passing by today. Reach out and touch the hem of his garment. Reach out because God is able to hear the sinner's cry. But the Bible said now, they had faith in their cleansing and they were cleansed. One glorified God. Now, follow me as I share with you three points, Pastor Nevings. And then I'll take my seat, Elder Duncan, as we preach together. Praise God. The three points that I'm sharing is in the form of an acronym ARS. A-R-S. Now, journey with me now because R, number one, new hope is the topic. And the first point I want to share is that New hope, Sister Jarrett, arrives or arrives to those who wait or arrives to the waiters. They were there and they were waiting for their healing. They were there and they were waiting for their cleansing. They were there, brothers and sisters. They were hoping one day deliverance would happen because the system was still there and the system didn't give up. They could have committed uh, suicide but they did not they could have given up brothers and sisters but they did not arrive follow me now as we journey with this first point arrive to reach a place at the end of a journey or a stage in a journey at the end of the journey or a stage in a journey waiters mean a man whose job is to serve customers or the tables in a restaurant but, but, but that's not the, the waiting or the wait I'm referring to. I'm referring to a person who waits for a time, event, or an opportunity. That's the wait I am referring to. These persons were waiting for a time, an event, and an opportunity. Be they heard that Jesus uh, was passing by, so they cried out. 
This was the right time. This was the opportunity. This was the event to call out to reach Jesus. Can I tell you something tonight? Even in our midst of our COVID, Jesus is passing by. And that is why as a district, we, we, we rally the brethren today, uh, rally the brethren last Sabbath, and we went out into the community to share the love of Jesus. Of course, with social distance and with our mass. But guess what? Jesus is passing by. Someone today needs to hear a word from God. Notice new hope arrived to the waiters. Let me share something in terms of the condition of the waiters, Elder Duncan. You see, the condition of the waiters, they were according to Leviticus chapter 13, 44 through 46. There were one, obvious lepers. They were unclean, Elder Duncan. They were unkept. They were diseased. That was their condition. And let me share something with you because leprosy is also called Hans's disease. And Hans's disease is a chronic infectious sickness caused by a rod-shaped acid fast bacillus. And there you have the information. It chiefly affects the skin, mucous membranes of the upper respiratory tract, the eyes and certain peripheral nerves. So it damaged the nerves, Elder Duncan. So this was their condition, their nerves. They experienced different damages and pain. So this leads me now to look at the experience of the waiters. What was the experience like? They feel pain. They experience pain. These persons who are waiting experience pain. Pain is a localized or generalized unpleasant bodily sensation or complex of sensations that causes mild to severe physical discomfort and emotional distress and typically results from bodily disorder such as injury or disease. So Sister Duncan, these persons experience pain. The waiters experience pain, but they had to stay in the pain. They feel pain. Right now for the year 2021, there are different people going through different pain. Different kind of pain that we are experiencing. There is the physical pain. The physical pain can be further divided into chronic pain and neuropathic pain. Chronic pain has to do with pain that lasts over six months. This is chronic pain ongoing. Neuropathic pain has to do with damage to the nerves. Because these persons who had leprosy, they had damages to their nerves. Peripheral damages. Which means that their hands and their toes, they were losing parts of their body. So they are experiencing losses. Various losses. So they feel pain. They went through physical pain. But in addition to that, as we too experience pain, these persons, Sister Jared, can only imagine, Sister Carolyn, extreme pain, various pain people are going through. And brothers and sisters, one pain lead to another pain. Like recently, a brother met into a car accident, was very much traumatized, and he came to visit me and said, Pastor, I want counseling, I want help. And after having started session, I recognized that he was carrying a number of pain inside because this accident in his mind, he could have died. But God spared his life for a reason to glorify God. And that is why we are proclaiming the message right here in North Jamaica Conference for mankind, people everywhere to serve the true and living God because God is real. His second coming is sure and certain. That is why we are saying repent and be baptized. Various pain. But notice the experience of the waiters. Notice they feel pain. They experience pain. But note as well, they endure the pain. They had to sit in the pain. And James says, James 1 and verse 3 through 4, it says, Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish, Brother Rodney, its work. 
Let it finish its work, brothers and sisters who are watching. Uh, let it finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So thank God, because God works even in pain. God produces gold even in pain. They endure the pain. They could not run anymore. They had to sit. I don't know which pain you may be running from right now. Could it be that you're running from divorce pain? Could it be that you're running from family pain? Could it be that you're running from job pain? Whatever it may be, there are some pain that you've got to sit in because guess what? Hope is on its way. New hope is on its way. And this leads me to the next aspect that they hope in pain. They feel the pain. They, they experience the pain. They endure the pain. But they hope in pain. You see, these persons, these lepers, they could have committed suicide. They could have killed themselves, Mr. President, but they did not. They were there because there was some level of hope just the same. Maybe someone would have given them food from a distance. There was still some level of hope. Their hope was going down but there was still hope as long there is life or breath in your mouth. Once there is life, there is hope. There is hope for somebody who says that I am about to end my life. There is hope for someone who has been alleged accused of certain things. And you know that you are not guilty. Yet you feel hurt and you feel betrayed. There is hope for somebody who is watching tonight. I say Hope in the pain. Like Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I will hope in my pain. Because tears the language that God understands. Somebody says, weeping may endure for just a night, but joy, great joy, praise God, joy comes in the morning. I say hope, Sister Jarrett, in the pain. Sister Duncan, hope in the pain. Ella Duncan, hope in the, pray, in the pain. Hope in the pain. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall what? Mount up with wings like eagles. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. New hope, new hope arrives to those who wait. Wait upon the Lord. But in addition to that point, I also want to share that new hope releases energy to the waiters. New hope releases what? Energy to the waiters. You see, Ella Duncan, these persons, they were running out of energy. But when they heard that Jesus was passing by, they got additional energy. And they invested the energy in Jesus. They invested the energy in Jesus. Know who you invest your energy in. Am I talking to somebody? They invest their energy in Jesus. Invest your energy in godly things. Invest your energy in things that are above. Invest your energy in heavenly things. They shouted Jesus. They gave Jesus their energy and they were cleansed. Can somebody say amen tonight? You see, there is energy investment. So they invest in energy. I've been learning about investment, Elder Duncan, that you can make various investments in the stock market. You can invest in bonds and in stocks, you name it. And there is high risk, there is low risk, there is moderate risk, you name it, investment. But the concept of investment is that you put your money to work and you expect to get back something in return, profit or dividends in return. Now, these persons would have understood that by shouting to the others for help, they couldn't help them. Other persons could not help them, could not give them what they needed. So they heard Jesus and they invested in Jesus. That is energy investment. There is also energy depreciation. Energy depreciation is when you invest your energy and you recognize that this person is not adding to your energy or this person suck you from your energy, drain your energy because it's a negative. 
It tells me, therefore, you've got to know who to invest your energy in. Because if you invest your energy in negative source, in biting and malicing, you're going to lose your energy. You're going to get weaker. So these persons call on Jesus. Can I tell somebody something, something who is watching today? Invest your energy in Jesus and there is a guarantee return or, in, or even profit on your investment. Invest in Jesus. There's energy depreciation, but there's also energy appreciation. If you invest in godly things, be sure that your energy is going to be increased. Let me tell you something. I like to invest in Jesus. So I wake up early in the morning when my brain wave is at theta wave or even at a slower pace so that I can absorb the word of God. I want to eat of Jesus. I want to dwell or delve in Jesus' word. When I invest in Bible study, when I invest in prayer, when I invest in visitation, when I invest in helping others, I recognize that somehow I get additional energy to do more. I get dopamine, Elder Duncan, Sister Duncan. I get more energy because I invest it in godly things. Even during this time, when the negativity is high, I say, look for positive people to gain energy. I say, even at your workplace, when the negative energy can drain you, can cause you to be mentally exhausted, I say, look for godly things. Eat godly, heavenly food, the natural food that helps to give you added energy to move like fire in your bone. Then you recognize that you have more energy. So you get energy from good food, healthy plant-based food. You get energy from positive people. And you get energy by doing things that you love. Energy appreciation. And there is energy surplus. But only one person experienced the energy surplus. It was the one who turned back. Am I talking to somebody today? Only one person experienced the energy surplus. Only one who turned back. Why did he go... Why did he get that energy surplus? Because he invested in Jesus Christ. When we put our works in Christ, God rewards it. The Bible says, prove me now, says the Lord of hosts. Malachi 3 verse 10. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a what? Blessing that there shall not be what? Room enough to receive when we bless God with what we have, God has a way of blessing us abundantly. Energy surplus, even like the five wise virgins. In Matthew chapter 25, there were ten virgins. But five were wise and five were foolish. The Bible said the five that were wise carried extra oil. So they had extra energy to continue their journey. With what we are facing right now, we need extra oil. We need the oil of the Holy Spirit to carry us through the year 2021. Am I talking to somebody tonight? We need that anointing like the day of Pentecost. The Bible said they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And in their spirit, it was like fire. Shut up in their bone. They couldn't keep still because there was a certain kind of fire that is within them. It is a time like this that the church needs to arise and go. Our theme is I will go. I will go in different places because we have been connected with the source of energy who is Jesus Christ. So I am committed to go in the name of Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters, new hope gives New energy releases energy. But finally, finally, follow me now. New hope, you see, Mr. President, stimulates thanksgiving and praise. New hope stimulates what? Thanksgiving, Pastor Nevins, and praise. Because the one who returned was now thanking God. The one who returned was now praising God you see the intent for cleansing was for his worship the intent for our healing is to worship God this one recognized 
that it was all about God. In fact, the, ten, the nine who went away could not see. But only one saw. For the Bible said when he saw that he was cleansed. Obviously, these others didn't recognize what was happening. But this person saw. You see, this is deep than what we think. Because he not only see the cleansing, but he understood the power of Jehovah God. When you know what you know, when God has healed you, you've got to return and praise his name. You've got to shout, and not only shout, but to praise God. For according to the Bible, there's a particular word for cleanse. It is kathar izo which means to cleanse literally, ceremonially, or spiritually according to the context. And there's another word for heal, Elder Duncan, which is eomai. Pastor, try pronouncing that one. <laughs> means I heal generally of the physical, sometimes of spiritual disease. So let me share something with you, brothers and sisters. This is what I have recognized. Heal people, praise Jehovah. Heal people glorify Jehovah. All ten were lepers. All ten heard of Jesus. All ten cried, Jesus, Master. All ten sought for mercy. All ten went to the priest. All ten were cleansed. But notice now, nine got what they wanted, cleansing. But one got what he needed, healing. Nine got what they wanted, cleansing, but only one got what he needed, healing. Nine were still filled with pride, selfishness, and distrust, but one overcame self. Am I talking to somebody tonight? One overcame pride, one overcame distrust, and one was serving God. Nine were not only farther in physical distance, but was also in spiritual distance. One was now physically and spiritually close to his master, Jehovah. You see, when God healed you, you must be close to him. Am I talking to somebody? When God done, has done something for you, you should be very intimate. You should be very connected with him because you have experienced his healing. And heal people, heal other people. Can I tell you something? One thanksgiving was a thanksgiving. One thanksgiving was a thanksgiving. Can I tell you something? We have got to have our thanksgiving to be really thanksgiving. Because he was now giving on to God. When you are healed, you will give God the praise. There will be thanksgiving in your entire being. The songwriter says, give off your best to the master. Give off the strength of your youth. One thanksgiving was a thanksgiving. One thanksgiving was transformed into thanks living. I wonder if the church is with me. You see, the thanksgiving was transformed into thanks living. Thanksgiving cannot be a thanksgiving if there's no thanks living. You see, we have got to experience the living in order to be in a state of thanksgiving. You see, this one was not just saying thank you, but he was giving to God. You see, you can't say you're praising God, but you're not giving on to God. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. You will obey me. You will give unto the Lord. Can somebody say tonight? I say, transform your thanksgiving into thanks living. Can I tell you something? Heal people return and praise God. I remember the lame man, Mr. President, in Acts chapter 3, 1 through 8, when he was there and he was begging for arms. And Peter came by. And Peter said, silver and gold have I not none. But what I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Demons have to flee from the presence of God. Call his name in the name of Jesus. Rise up.
can walk. The Bible said that man got up and he was praising God. There was thanksgiving and there was praise to God because he recognized who God is. There must be praise to Jehovah. Let me tell you something as I continue. There should be thanksgiving in tithes and offering. Can the church say amen? You see, Leviticus chapter 27 verse 30 says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. And Deuteronomy 14 verse 22 says, Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. This is thanks. Come on now, church, are you with me? This is thanksgiving, giving unto God because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We praise God for our members who have been giving unto God. Continue to give unto Jehovah God. So when God has done something for you, you return in tithes and offering. Because, can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? God has set up the systematic benevolence plan in the church, not so much for him, but for us. So God sets up a plan to protect the church from greed and from covetousness and selfishness. So he says, all right, I will bless you with these things. But, let, but once you return... And give God what belongs to him. You overcome pride, greed, and selfishness. So when you give unto God, you're praising God. Can the church say amen tonight? Amen. You see, there's also thanksgiving in temple, pastor Nevins. Let me tell you, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 through 20, it says, What? Know he not? That you're what? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you which ye have of God, and you are not your own. It says, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God. Give unto God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So when we honor God in our body, we are giving him thanks because this temple is a vessel that we get for a short time. The Bible says the days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength it be four score, brothers and sisters, our days are numbered. The little time that we have on this earth, let's give God the best in our body. How we treat our body is very important. This is the one machine that God has given us to carry us through this life. And how we treat it will help to determine the quality of the machinery. Praise God in your body. Our body is the temple of the Holy God. Thanksgiving in tithes and offering. Thanksgiving in our temple. But also thanksgiving in time. And put that on the screen too, brothers and sisters. Now in addition to all the commandments. In all the nine commandments. This commandment speaks of time. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 28 through 10. Remember the what? Sabbath day to keep it all. Holy six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Do all your carpentry. Do all your masonry. Do all those work. The seventh day is a delight. Where we come and we honor God by connecting with each other. It's a memorial of creation. Knowing that God has created the world in six days. But he rested on the seventh day, brothers and sisters. He rested on the seventh day. And the Bible says, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. The Sabbath, when we remember the Sabbath day, we are showing thanksgiving and we are giving God the best in time. And finally, we give thanks in our talent. The gifts that God has given to us. We praise God with our gifts. In Jeremiah 1 verse 4 through 10, the Bible says, The word of the Lord came to me saying, 
Before I formed thee in the mother's womb, in your womb, in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too long. Too young, the Bible said. But the Lord said to me, do not say, I am too young. You must go to everyone. New hope, I will go. You must go to everyone. I send you to say, and whatever I command you, do not be afraid of them. For I am with you and will rescue you, declare the Lord. Jeremiah, go forth, send a message. Send a loud cry to the people. Let them know that they need to break up their folly grounds. Let them know that they need to change their ways. Let them know that the master ought to be worshipped. We are to serve the true and living God, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. God has given us new hope. New hope is available today. Brothers and sisters, why won't you reach out and reach to Jesus? Tonight is the night. Tonight is the night for salvation. Tonight, the Bible says, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart because he's calling. New hope, could it be that you're going through some depression or some uh, psychological issues or, or some physical issues? Could it be that right now you're crying out for help? Unemployment issues, stress, chronic, acute stress, whatever it may be. Could it be right now you're dying and you need help? God is passing by. They reach out and they cry, Jesus, Master, I say to you, those persons who have been watching, you can reach out in the chat right now and say, I want a new life. I want a new start. I want new hope. I want a change of life. Write it there. Send that message right now. Say, Pastor, I am ready to be baptized. I'm ready for a Bible study. I'm ready for prayer because Jesus is coming soon. We don't know what will happen for this year, but we know that Jesus is in charge. He's coming soon, brothers and sisters. Remember, there's new hope for this year. New hope arrives to the waiters. New hope releases energy to those who wait on the Lord. New hope stimulates thanksgiving and praise i recently had some sessions with a couple the couple is struggling going through their challenges struggling with hope the brother said to me pastor i don't think my family is going to make it i don't think my marriage is going to work Pastor, it's over. It's done. Right now, I'm going to move. And through the intervention and counseling, new hope started to grow. And the brothers and the sisters' perspective started to change. Recently, the brother said to me, Pastor, you know, my wife, text me and said, if I'm all right, to check up on me. And he felt so good. Healing is happening. And he is rejoicing. And that hope started to grow. And bonding is taking place. Marriages are going together, being united. I say even to my sister, who I talked recently, going through your issues overseas, or be it inland, and you're wondering if your husband or if your wife will stay, if you will continue, and you have challenges with your children, there is hope. There is hope for you tonight. Jesus saves. Listen to this song as we minister to your heart.
That's what the altar is for. We're going to pray now. You want for us to pray for you right there on Facebook, right there on YouTube. You can just raise your hand or just say, pray for me, pastor, in the chat. Pray for me. Write your request. And remember, as God bring blessings, reach out to someone. Let's pray. Eternal Father, thank you for hope in Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blessed hope that we have tonight. Thank you for the viewers watching on YouTube, Facebook. Thank you for the families now surrounded, maybe in their homes, maybe in their, on their veranda, in their car, or on the road. But somehow, the Spirit of God is now knocking at their heart's door. And they are saying, God, come in. Pray, God, that tonight they will say, God, I'm ready. I'm ready to surrender all. Into your hands now we present ourselves, God, for healing and restoration. Thank you for hearing. Thank you for healing. All those who are typing right now are saying, God, I'm claiming healing. Into your hands we present ourselves. Amen.